Hi, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the second open session of week four, module six. This is the last session, guys, and I'm very glad to be here with you. In this last session of module six, I hope you enjoy it and I have and I hope that you learned a lot during this module. So I wish you the best for module seven. And let's start now with this last session of module six. This is the agenda for today's session. In today's session, guys, we'll see the conjugations of verbs in third person of singular. We'll also look at vocabulary to describe physical appearance possessive adjectives, vocabulary of places in a city, and vo vocabulary to describe a place. That is what we are going to look at in this ses uh, session, guys, the last session of module six. So let's start with the conjugation of verbs in the third person of singular. Remember that you can ask, you can interrupt me anytime you want during the session. And, um, you can also uh, activate your microphone in case you have any question or comment, or even bring your comment in the chat box and uh, I will more than glad to help you out with your questions or comments. So hi everyone, and let's start with the first uh, topic of this session that is a conjugation of verbs in the third person of singular. As you know, in the, um, in the forum, this week we have two forums that we have the learning forum and the integrative forum. In integrative forum, you have to describe and introduce someone else in the class. So for that, guys, you have to use verbs conjugated in the third person of singular in present simple. And that's the reason why we are going to practice how to conjugate verbs in the third person of singular. So I, I have here two links. So I'm going to copy the first link and I'm going to paste it in the chat. Here it is. Wait, um, wait a second. I'm trying to copy and paste it. Here it is, guys. Um, this is the first exercise that we are going to work with in this session. So let's give a click on, on this link and let's see what the exercise is about. So give a click on the link and let's see what the exercise is about. I'm going to do the same, guys, and I'm going to show it to you on the screen in a matter of seconds. I'm just waiting to be loaded. Hear it coming. It's coming, guys. I'm just that uh, my internet connection is a little bit slow, but it's coming. It's on the way, I hope. Hello, Jessica, and hello, Sylvia. Uh -huh. It's coming, guys, it's coming. But sometimes it takes ages because the internet connection is so slow, but it's here now. I'm going to share it with you on the screen so that everybody can see it and everybody can do it along with me. So we have an exercise here. Hi, Fabian. Welcome to the session. So here, guys, we have a um, present simple, the third person of singular. As you know, guys, we always have to follow rules in English. But uh, the most important is that you use the language. But anyway, um, remember that anytime you want to conjugate a verb with he, she, or it, you need to add S 
ES or IES to the verbs. Most of them, in, in most of them, we only add S. For example, I talk, he talks. I drive, she drives. But sometimes we have to add ES. And when? Well, when we have a verb that ends with double S, that ends with X, that ends with SH or CH or O. For example, I fix, she fixes, I do, it does. Can you see? I fix, she fixes, I do, it does. And there are some other verbs in which we have to add IES. These are the verbs that end with Y, but before Y, there is a consonant, for example, tidy. You can see that there is a Y that is in breath. And before this Y, there is a consonant that is in green. So when we have this type of verse that ends with a Y, but before the Y, there is a consonant, we have to change the Y for I, and we have to add ES. For example, I tidy, he tidies. I play, he plays. What happened in this case? In this case, guys, we don't add I to the verb. Why? Because we have a Y that is in red, but before the Y, we have a vowel. And when we have this case, we only add S to the verb, right? So you will tell me how do you conjugate these verbs, these verbs on the left. We have some verbs on the left. And you are going to help me to conjugate these verbs in the third person of singular. For example, he walks and then he, I say, I go and he, what do you say, guys? Good. Good. Right, very good. I dance and she, what is that? And dance and she, uh, these verbs, we only add S, right? Dances, right? I speak, he speaks, okay? This is like in the first, um, they fit the first rule because we only add S. Most of the verbs, um, when we conjugate them in the third person of singular, we, we have to add S. I study and she, but what happened here? Here we have a, um, a Y, before the Y, there is a consonant. So in this case, we have to change the Y for I and we have to add ES. I think it's not that difficult, guys. You just have to memorize the rules and you will be able to use them correctly all the time. What about enjoy? Look at this. We have a Y. This uh, verb ends with a Y, but before the Y, there is a vowel sound. So if we have such a case, we have to add only an S. And we say, he enjoys the party, for example. She studies English. He speaks Chinese. She dances very well. He goes to school by bus. I fix he. In this case, uh, it ends with X. So we have to add ES. He fixes. You know what the verb fix means? Means arreglar, componer. For example, he fixes his car. Jump. It. Only add an S, guys. It jumps. It jumps. Uh, wash. <laughs> Washes. <laughs> Washes. All right. For example, uh, you know, in the time of the pandemic, he washes his hands um, very often, okay? We wash our hands very often in the, in the time of the pandemic and we still do it. The habit is with us right now. We have to wash our hands every, every time. We eat or we go to the toilet and um, I find she, she, um, we only add an S. She finds the class interesting or she finds the class boring or she finds the class um, challenging, okay? Finds. A Mary, now we have the verb Mary. 
So look at the verb, uh, Mary, it ends with Y, but before Y, there is a comma. Yes, okay. Mary. 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 Ah, Mary's. Okay, he marries him. Mm -hmm. Keep. Keeps. Keeps. For example, she keeps many secrets. Ella guarda muchos secretos. She keeps many secrets. I love it. For example, I'm, if I am talking about my dog. I said, my dog loves, loves chicken. So I can say it loves it. Loves, right? We only have S. I bother. What's the meaning of bother? Looks like brother, but it's not. This is bother. Bother is a bird that means molestar, okay? Uh, for example, my brother bothers me a lot. Bothers. Sing, sing. That's a bird. Um, cantar. In a so, how do you say it in the third person singular? We say like, sing, right? For example, Shakira sings beautifully. Lie. He. He lies. Lies, right. Like Pinocchio, you know that Pinocchio lies a lot? The Pinocchio. Yes. Yeah, he's a liar. The movie Pinocchio by Guillermo del Toro. Uh-huh. Pinocchio. Well, in English, Pinocchio. Pinocchio, yes. <laughs> and okay. Pinocchio is a liar because he lies a lot. Yeah. But at the end, he regrets that and he becomes a good boy. So now, catch. He catches, okay? For example, he catches the boss every day to go to work. He catches the boss to go to work every day. Very good, guys. Now we have another exercise in which you have to choose if the verb um, goes without S or with S. And also we have to choose between the do and does, the auxiliaries, we remember do and does are the auxiliaries for the present simple. We use them in questions, only in questions and uh, when we answer a yes, no question, remember when we answer a yes, no question, we say, yes, I do, no, I don't, yes, he does, no, he doesn't. So what about the first one? Samantha like or Samantha likes playing tennis? What do you say? Like. Likes, yes. What about the letter B? We make or we make delicious cakes. What is that? What is makes. the correct? Make or makes? Makes. Mm, in this case, it's make. Why not makes? Because remember that makes is only for he, she, and it. And in this case, our subject is we. So if we have we as a subject, we have to say make without an S. What about the next one? I'll call Tom, feed or feeds the dog every day. What is fit or fits? We say feeds, right? Uncle Tom feeds. Why? Because Uncle Tom can be replaced by he, remember? And he, this is a third person of singular. What about do or does? They live in London? Is a question, guys. So what do you say? Do or does? Does. No, in this case is do. Oh. Yeah, why? Because does, remember guys, does is only for he, she, and it. For example, does your brother, does your mom, does your sister, does your teacher, does your dog. But in this case, we have they. So we say, do I, do we, do they, do you? What about the next one? My brother eats or my brother eats a lot of hamburgers. What is that? My brother eats, right? 
my brother eats a lot of hamburgers because he doesn't have time to go back home and eat a decent food. So he has to eat a lot of hamburgers. He has a very bad diet. What about letter F? You always come or you always comes to class early? Come or comes? You always come, right? Because you is not a third person of singular. So we only say come. Next, they all work or they all works in the post office. What do you say? They all? Yes, Fabian, they all work. The giant panda, you know, we are talking about a fact. In this case, uh, we're talking about an animal that is a giant panda. The giant panda live or lives in China. What is it? The giant panda lives. Yes, Jessica, lives because we're talking about an animal and this is the third person singular. Fox says, now we're talking in plural. We are also talking about animals, but in plural, foxes live or foxes lives in the forest. What is the right answer? Foxes uh, leave, no, leave in this case. Why? Because we are talking in plural, in plural. If we were talking only about one fox, yes, it lives. But in this case, we're talking about many foxes. So they live in the forest. What about the air? The air move or the air moves around the sun? What is? The air move or the earth moves? Any idea? We're talking about the moves. Moves, yes. The earth moves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. La tierra gira alrededor del sol. This is a theory by Copernicus. Do you remember in your, in your geography classes, maybe you heard about Copernicus? And he said that the air moves around the sun. What about letter K? You don't or you don't go to the gym. What is that? You doesn't. No, in this case it's you don't. Remember that doesn't is just for he, she, or it. Yeah, so in this case is you don't, you don't. What about the next one? Michael doesn't drive or Michael doesn't drives? In this case, we have the, um, the auxiliary guys that is doesn't. And remember that when we have an auxiliary, the verb is not, is not modified. Cuando tenemos un auxiliar, el verbo no se modifica. So in this case, it's like that. Michael doesn't drive to work. Lo mismo pasa aquí, vean. Uh, we have do or does he know how to swim? What is auxiliary, guys? We use thus because this is the third person of singular. And look at the verb. The verb, no, it, it isn't modified. Lisa and Nancy often jog or often jogs in the park. We are talking about Lisa and Nancy. So that is jog because they are two of them. So I'm talking in plural. Yes, Jessica, uh-huh. Now, these children rise, or these children rise their bikes to school every day. These children rise, or these children rise. So I'm talking about in plural, because I'm talking about more than one child. So I'm saying rise. These children ride their bikes to school every day. My sister never, never tie this like this, or never tie this her bedroom. Um, remember that this is the, the rule here, tie this. We have to make some changes. So it's the second one. Does your brother run or does your brother runs? Les dije, les dije hace un momento que cuando tenemos un auxiliar, el verbo no se modifica. Entonces vean, aquí tengo mi auxiliar y el verbo no se modifica. You and your mom don't cook. So in this case, guys, we have you and your mom. ¿Quién es tú y tu mamá? Pues ustedes, ¿no? You. Entonces, para el you nos toca 
Don't cook. Don't, don't cook. cook. Yes, don't very good. Cook. You don't cook. And that's it. So now we are going to check our answers. Let's see if they are correct. Yeah, they are correct. Well, guys, the purpose of this exercise was to get familiar with the rules that you have to take into account in when we conjugate a verb in the third person singular. Remember that in the forum, you have to introduce someone else using the third person of singular. Now let's go back to our presentation. Let's see. We have another exercise, but let's go back to it in case we have time. Let's go with the next topic. Vocabulary to describe physical appearance. Remember guys that in the blog, in the project guys, you have to do a, a project and you have to answer some questions. One of those questions is what do you look like? What do you look like means como eres físicamente, okay? What do you look like? Solo les preguntan ¿Cómo eres físicamente? What do you look like? Esta es la pregunta. Pero también, ¿cómo sería la pregunta? ¿Cómo eres? En términos de personalidad. En términos de personalidad, ustedes podrían preguntar, What are you like? What are you like? Vean. Y, y si quieres preguntar, ¿qué te gusta? Entonces, what do you like? Vean que estas tres preguntas que estoy poniendo en el chat se parecen mucho, pero significan cosas diferentes. What do you look like? Que es la que tienen en el, en el um, blog. Quiere decir, ¿cómo eres físicamente? What are you like? ¿Cómo eres en términos de personalidad? And what do you... Ay, ahí me faltó el... Sorry, me faltó ahí el pronombre. Me lo comí, chicos. What do you like? Ahora sí. What do you like? Esto quiere decir, ¿qué te gusta? Vean, son tres preguntas muy similares, pero significan cosas diferentes. So let's um, have a look at the first exercise to practice the vocabulary to describe physical appearance. Remember, guys, that there are two verbs that we use to describe vocabulary uh, in terms of physical appearance. ¿Cuáles son estos verbos que usamos para describir a alguien en términos de apariencia física? Bueno, tenemos dos. El verbo ser o estar conjugado como am, is, o are. Y también tenemos el verbo have conjugado, que puede ser have o has. Ahora, ¿cómo van a saber si van a utilizar el verbo ser o estar? o el verbo have o has para describir a alguien en términos de apariencia física. Muy sencillo. Aquí les voy a poner la fórmula. Recuerden que el verbo ser o estar o el verbo to be, como lo quieran poner en infinitivo, este verbo va con adjetivos, adjectives, todos los adjetivos que ustedes quieran. Y el verbo have va con sustantivos. Por ejemplo, dice, sí, quieres decir, yo soy alta, I am tall. Uh, I am tall. Is tall es un adjetivo, ¿ya vieron? Tall es un adjetivo, entonces yo por eso utilizo el verbo ser o estar. Pero ¿qué pasa si yo quiero decir, eh, tengo cabello largo? El cabello es un sustantivo, entonces ahí ya no puedo utilizar verbo ser o estar. Ahí tengo que utilizar, I have long hair. Sí, porque estoy hablando de, de mi cabello. Entonces, cabello es sustantivo. So I'm going to um, share the first link in the chat and we are going to um, do the first exercise to practice the vocabulary to describe physical appearance. So here it goes, guys. Give a click on the link that is in the chat box now and let's see what is on the screen now. Okay, guys, what we have here now is how to describe people. How to describe people. I'm going to share the screen now. And we have vocabulary describing people 
And here we have different um, vocabulary that we use to describe some uh, physical traits or physical uh, characteristics. For example, we have a straight. A straight is an adjective. Don't forget it, guys. A straight is an adjective. Beef. Beef, no decimos beer, porque beer es oso. No decimos beer, porque beer es cerveza. Decimos beef. Beef means barba. Eyebrows, y es un sustantivo. Eyebrows, cejas. Y también es un sustantivo. Wavy, ondulado. Eh, y también, bueno, este es un adjetivo ondulado. Blonde, blonde, rubio. Y es un adjetivo. Mustache. Is a noun. Bigote. Okay. Belt. Belt es un adjetivo que es calvo. Curly. Curly es un um, adjetivo también. Curly. So you will tell me, um, you are going to make sentences, guys. You will tell me, um, él, por ejemplo, ella tiene o es, depende, ¿no? Les comenté que el verbo ser estar se utiliza con adjetivos y el verbo have o has se utiliza con sustantivos. Entonces, ¿quién me quiere decir la primera oración para esta persona? The man in blue. What can you tell me about him? ¿Qué, qué me pueden decir de él? ¿Y cuál palabra utilizan para describir a esta persona? Anybody wants to tell me, any volunteer who would like to participate with a sentence. ¿Cómo dirían él tiene barba? Es evidente, ¿no? Podemos ver. So, anybody, any volunteer who would like to tell me? He has right. a uh -huh. beard. He has a beard. Right, okay. He has a beard. Beard. Yes, very good. Now, what about the second, the child over here, guys? The child. What is evident in him? ¿Qué es evidente en él? Su cabello, no? We can see his hair. What can you tell me about his hair? What can you say about, what do you say about him? Um, anybody? ¿Cómo me podrían decir, él tiene cabello chino? He has curly hair. Ah, he has curly hair. Very good. He has curly hair. Algunos me han puesto Chinese hair. That is, that is completely wrong, guys, because Chinese is a nationality for Chinese people. And in, in this case, we are talking about hair. Next, uh, what about the next one? Here, look at the girl. She's blondie. Has. Uh, look at his, her hair. The lady, the, the little girl has. What can you tell me, guys? Dried hair. Um, blonde hair, do you think, or what hair? this girl, this girl, well, yeah, she's blonde, but she is, her hair is also wavy, so she wavy. has wavy, wavy hair, yes, she has wavy hair, and what about the, the next little girl that is smiling, she's smiling, she's, she looks very happy, what can you tell me about this girl in terms of physical appearance? Uh, this girl is very blondie. Yeah, yes, it's blondie. Yeah, but in this case, we say blonde. In Spanish, we say güera, güera, güerita, <laughs> but in English, yeah. blondie <laughs> or blonde, right? Next, uh, what about this guy over here? It looks like a. Yeah, maybe he has, a he has a mustache. Yes, he has a mustache. Right, very good. He has a mustache. And over here we have another girl. 
And this girl, what can you tell me about this girl? This girl has a straight hair. Straight hair, yeah. This girl has a straight hair. Yeah, it's evident. And what about this man? He looks Asian, right? Maybe he's Japanese or Chinese or Korean. I don't know. He looks Asian. But what can you tell me about this man? Anybody wants to tell me this man is or has? What do you say? He's bald. Yeah, he's bald. Bald. La A la pronunciamos como E muy suave, belt. Okay, his belt. And the last one, the last girl, guys. Um, we can say that her, her eyebrows, or she has thick eyebrows, right? Tiene cejas pobladas. So we can say that she has thick, thick eyebrows. All right, now let's look at the next exercise. Here we have a set of cartoon pictures. Look at them. They are very similar, but there are some differences. So you are going to focus on the differences and the similarities. So uh, we have here, the, in the picture one, the old man has brown eyebrows. In the picture one, the old man has brown eyebrows. This is the old man and he has brown eyebrows. Yes. Is that true or false, guys? He has brown eyebrows. Yes or not? Is that true or false? False. Do you think it's false? I think his eyes are dark. Yeah. Okay. But in the chat, someone else said true. Uh, Scandra said that it, it was true, but um, I think it's true as well, but I'm not sure because look, um, maybe he has dark brown eyebrows. Well, anyway, let's leave it like, like that. What about number two? The old man has white eyebrows. In picture two, the old man has white eyebrows. Is that true or false? Someone else in the chat says, true, Fabian. All right, next. In picture one, the boy has straight hair. The boy in picture one has a straight hair. True or false? It's false, yes, definitely, because he has wavy hair. In picture one, the girl has blonde hair. True or false? Picture one, the, the girl has blonde hair. That is, that is true, yes, it is. And in picture two, the boy has curly hair. <clears throat> in picture two, the boy has curly hair, true or false? That is um, curly hair. The boy has curly hair in picture. False. It's false because he has a straight. False. So it's false. In picture two, the girl has black hair. In picture two, the girl has black hair. True or false? False. false. Yes. In picture two, the man is bald and has a got uh, has got a mustache. In picture two, the man is bald and has got a mustache. Yes. Yes, right? Yes. It's true, right? In picture two, the man is bell. Está calvo? Yeah. yeah. Has got a mustache? Yes, it's true. In picture one, the man is bell and has got a beard. The, the, the man is bell and has got a beard. Yes, it's true. All right, now it says, Yes, Jessica. It says, write three sentences to describe them. My best friend has black hair and straight hair. She doesn't have a beard. She doesn't have curly hair. Well, uh, I need a volunteer. Um, in this case, guys, you are going to describe one of your best friends. 
you can tell me about um, his or her hair. Um, tell me about his or her weight, height, color of skin, etc. Okay, me pueden incluir el color de la piel, el cabello, la forma de la cara, eh, el tamaño de la nariz, los ojos, las cejas, eh, lo que ustedes quieran. Por ejemplo, my best friend Flor has black and, and straight hair. She doesn't have a beard, obviously not, and she doesn't have curly hair. Mm, because uh, she doesn't have a beard because she's a woman and women, we don't usually have beards. Anybody wants to tell me about a friend of yours? Alguien quiere describir al, algún amigo? Anybody wants to tell me? Any volunteers? Anybody, guys? You can also do it in the in the uh, in the chat box. You can also write your sentences about your friends in the chat box. You Write one, two, three sentences about your friends, okay? Um, so anybody, guys? Anybody wants to share the description for your friend, your best, one of your best friends, anybody? Any volunteer? Alguien, algún voluntario, chicos? Any volunteer? Si me escucha. Yes, yes, go ahead. Oh, bueno. My friend Roberto is tall, has grown high, mm -hmm. and, and wears glasses. Ajá, uh -huh. he wears glasses, all right. Very good. Okay. Is he attractive? Is, is he handsome? What do you think? Es guapo? Do you think he's, he's handsome? Is he good looking? Do you think? Yes, I suppose yes. <laughs> okay, he's your friend. Okay, guys, very, very good. Well, we um, have only one minute left for this uh, first part of the session. We are going to join the second part of the session with the same link. Remember, we joined the second part of the session with the same link. So um, let's give a click to this exercise just to check our answers and let's see if we were right or wrong. Here, ah, okay. This was true. In picture one, the old man has brown eyebrows. It was true, but they look, I know that they look black, but actually they are brown. Si se ven negras, pero realmente son café. Okay, Fabian says, and we also have a participation from Jessica. Jessica says, my friend Lisa is short, she likes soccer and she's cheerful, all right. Fabian says, I had a friend with black hair. Um, he was uh, 16 old, he already had a beard. Oh, when he was 16 years old, he already had a beard. Right, very good. You are using passing Paul Fabian, very good. And 